Now we get to talk about one of my favorite features in MicroStation, AccuDraw. Now AccuDraw by itself doesn't actually do anything. It works in conjunction with other tools, like your creation tools, place line, copy, move, scale, rotate, all those things. First thing we need to do is understand the behavior of AccuDraw. Now headquarters has taken the liberty of docking AccuDraw down along the bottom of your screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that, put it up here. If you do accidentally close AccuDraw, for example, if I close the AccuDraw window, you never want to close this. You always wanna leave this open. Leaving it docked is best. So I'm gonna close this. How would I open it back up again? It's going to open automatically when I open a file, but if I come up to my drawing aids under AccuDraw on the left, you're gonna see up here, toggle AccuDraw. If I turn that on, it's on. Turn it off. So that's a way to turn it back on. Again, it's automatically gonna open up. So I'm gonna go back to my home and we see the AccuDraw window up here. Again, I'm only undocking it for illustration purposes so you guys can clearly see this. Normally, you would leave it docked along the bottom. We're going to demonstrate this with a Play Smart Line tool. So I'm gonna go ahead and start a line right about here. The first thing you're gonna notice is the AccuDraw compass, which is a gray box. We are currently in rectangular mode, that's X and Y. We'll talk about polar in a moment. The AccuDraw compass has an origin at the center. The red tick is the AccuDraw compass's positive X, and the green tick is the AccuDraw compass's positive Y. I clearly state that it's the AccuDraw's positive X and Y because it's not your design files X and Y all the time. Right now, the two happen to be coincident. In the lower left corner, I have turned on my ACS triad, which shows me my design files positive X, which is the red and positive Y indicated. As I draw those AccuDraw's X and Y will change around. Now, if I move my cursor to the left, what we're gonna see in behavior here is on the AccuDraw window, you'll notice the X field is active. That's because I've moved my cursor in that direction. Now, if I'm in rectangular, and this is unique to rectangular, if I move my cursor up, you're gonna notice it jumps to the Y field if I'm anywhere in this quadrant. And if I move it to the right, you're gonna see it jumps back to the X and then down, it jumps back to the Y. Now, what you're seeing here is that your cursor's position relative to the origin tells AccuDraw which field to highlight, meaning which field do I wanna work in. So rule number one is move your cursor in the direction you plan to work, drawing a line, copying, moving, whatever, and then type in the distance. That's the second thing. You don't need to click in the AccuDraw window, X or Y, before you type in the values. It's already highlighted waiting for you to override the values. So if I move my cursor to the left, and if I wanted to type in a distance of 115, I could type in 115 and it automatically overrides the values that were there. Now, as I move my cursor up and down, you can see I'm constrained. If I get near the axis, you'll notice that it sticks. This is a feature in AccuDraw called axis indexing. We can turn this off temporarily, permanently. We can also adjust the sensitivity. We'll talk about that in the next video. If I wanted to draw my line along the x-axis like this, I'm already constrained at 115. So my cursor's position, all I'm doing now is telling it the y value. And if I'm as long as I'm indexed, I can then do a data and there's my value, 115. Notice the compass rotated. AccuDraw's positive y is pointing straight down. It's positive x is pointing to the left. You don't need to be concerned with that. If you wanna move your cursor and you wanna draw up, you just move your cursor. This will confuse some people because they look at the AccuDraw Y field and they're seeing a negative value when this is truly the design file's positive Y. Well, right now, it's the compass's negative Y. Just move your cursor in the direction you wanna go and then you just type in your distance. Now, as I move my cursor up, if I get to a certain point here, I'm indexed, you're gonna see the number 115 repeated. That's AccuDraw trying to help me. So if I wanted to repeat the value, all I have to do is a data, left click, and then a reset. Now I could have typed in any number I wanted to. So let's go ahead and do an undo. Now before we go any further, we're gonna talk about some AccuDraw shortcuts. I'm gonna open up the keyboard shortcuts dialog. So I'm gonna go up to my search ribbon feature. I'm gonna type in short. And as I do that, keyboard shortcuts appear. I'm gonna hit enter, and this will open the AccuDraw keyboard shortcuts on the left-hand side of my screen. Now, I wanted this to be open so that you can see where the shortcuts are if you wanted to peruse through them. Now, I'm gonna start another line here, and we saw what rectangular does, X and Y, but how do we get to polar? 
Well, on the left-hand side, you're going to see the letter M for change mode. So on my keyboard, if I hit the letter M, this toggles from the rectangular X and Y to polar, distance and angle. If I hit M again, it toggles back. So I'm going to go back to polar. As I move my cursor around, you're going to notice it does not jump between the distance and angle field. That's only for rectangular. In polar mode, we will have to force the toggle between the two, and we'll do that with the tab key. We'll see that in a moment. So I'm just going to go ahead and put in a distance of 68, and then I'm going to hit tab, and this will go down into my angle field. Now I can hit tab again, it'll toggle back up, but I want it in the angle field. So I'm going to hit tab and I'm down in the angle field, and you see it's displaying bearing information. So I'm going to go north 48 degrees east. So I'm going to type in N48E. I'm going to hit enter, so it's north 48 degrees in this case because I didn't put any minutes or seconds. It filled them in with the zeros. Now I'm constrained at that length and at that bearing. Now if I move my cursor to the other side, I can do the reciprocal of the bearing if I wanted to. But we're going to go up into the right, so I'm going to do a data. And you're going to notice the compass rotates to match the angle of the line. This is a feature called context sensitivity. Now, if I wanted to rotate the compass back to the top orientation, well, on the left-hand side on my list of shortcuts, about three-quarters of the way down is T for top. So if I hit T, that rotates the compass to the top orientation of the file. Now, I'm in a file that's not rotated. If I was in a rotated file, that may not be straight up and down like it is. So I'm going to switch back to rectangular, hit M. I'm going to move my cursor to the right. I'm going to type in a distance of 120. I'm going to data, left click with it indexed. And now we're going to learn another shortcut. This is the enter key. If I move my cursor anywhere in this quadrant and on my keyboard I hit enter, it will lock on that axis nearest my cursor. To unlock it, it's a toggle. I hit enter again, I've unlocked it. So I'm going to hit enter to lock it on the axis because my task is to draw a segment whose length is defined by this perpendicular point over here. So by locking it on the axis, I can define that segment's length by picking a perpendicular point of reference. So I'm going to do a data and then a reset. Now the next thing we're going to learn about is a shortcut. It's a keyboard mouse combination. It's control on my keyboard, tentative. Now my task is to start a line relative to the end point of this segment here, 55 feet over, 100 feet up. So I can draw construction lines, but that's just a waste of time and elements. I'm going to do a control tentative and that will set the origin where my cursor's at. Control plus tentative, that sets the origin. Now I have not started my line yet, so I'm gonna move my cursor to the left. I'm gonna type in 55, I don't hit enter, just 55, and then I move my cursor up and I'm going to type in, let's say, 95. I get dotted lines indicating where that's going to be with my cursor anywhere in the upper left quadrant. I do a data. I've started my line relative to that point, 55 over, 95 up. No construction lines were required to actually accomplish that. So I'm going to go ahead and hit reset. Now another shortcut is a two-letter shortcut. It lets me rotate the compass. Let's say my task is to start a line here and draw it perpendicular to this segment. So I'm going to start my line, and you can see my compass appears, and right now it's in the top orientation. To rotate it to be parallel to this line, or perpendicular, there are two ways to do it. The first one is going to be RQ. So I type in the letter R, and you'll see a pop-up appear, giving me a list of the other possible second letter shortcuts that start with R. Q is about halfway down. I'm going to hit Q. That suspends my current command and puts me in the rotate AccuDraw axis. So I'm going to pick the end point of this line. I'm going to data. This puts me back in my Play Smart Line tool, and I'm drawing my segment with a rotated compass. So let's say I just go out this distance, let's say 65, and I data and reset. The next two letter shortcut, RE, can be used to do the similar, but it's going to allow me to rotate the compass when I'm not on the element. RQ, I had to have a point on the element defined, and then I had to pick a second element. RE, I just pick the element whose angle I want to match. So I'm going to start a line out here, and you can see the compass is still on top. I'm going to rotate the compass to match the angle of this line right here. So I'm going to type in RE. Again, it suspends my current command. Watch the compass rotate 
when I data on the segment. Now the compass is parallel or perpendicular, however you want to look at it, to that line. Now these shortcuts can all be used in combination with each other. So I'm going to hit enter, locking me on the axis, and I'm going to move my cursor out to the end point here, and I'm going to data and then reset. So that's looking at the behavior of AccuDraw and a few of the shortcuts and where we can get the keyboard shortcut. You don't have to have the AccuDraw shortcuts window open to use them. I did it for learning purposes. So I'm going to dock my AccuDraw window at the bottom. I'm going to close the AccuDraw shortcuts and we're going to open up a file that actually has a rotated view because we're going to see what T and V do for us. So we're going to go to file open. It's going to come up here. I'm going to open up the second file in our list here. And what you're going to see is a rotated view. You can tell this because you can see the north arrow here is pointing down. So we're going to unrotate the view and I'm going to do a shift right click and I'm going to go to view orientation here and go top. You can see it unrotates my view. So now my north arrow is pointing straight up. So we now know that this is a rotated view. So we're going to do a view previous. Shift, right click, view previous. Now, if I was to draw a line, go to play smart line, and I start a line out here, you can see my compass right now is in the views X and Y. Your view has an absolute X and Y, and your design file has an X and Y. In this case, the two are not the same. If I hit the letter T for top, you can see that rotates my compass to line up with the north arrow. If I hit V, that rotates the compass to line up with the views X and Y. This can be very helpful for placing a north arrow. So I'm going to hit reset and I'm going to go to my place cell tool and I'm going to match this as the cell to place. So I'm going to do an alt data and that makes it the active cell. Now we're going to use a shortcut to get the compass on the screen. This is control tentative. We saw that earlier. So I'm going to hold down the control key. I'm on a tentative that will make the compass appear. And I did it in a random spot. Now, right now I'm placing this north arrow relative to the views X and Y. If I hit T for top, I'm now placing the north arrow relative to the design files true north. So if I place it out here, I'm guaranteed that it's placed correctly. So that's just some of the basics here. And we have more to talk about in the part two of the series.